Hey guys, Kristen Tyler here again for your Tuesday tip. Uh, I wanted to run through this uh, to talk a little bit about backgrounds, backgrounds on our paintings. Uh, I know uh, early on when I began painting, uh, I always struggled with doing a background that I thought was either believable or nice or fit the picture, okay? And I think I sweated way too much over that. And uh, of late, I've kind of been uh, trying to discover everything I could to find out what works good for a background. I did a handful of these paintings this week. In fact, these three that I have in front, I'll walk through them here. Uh, I did all three of these this week. And uh, there was a, a customer that wanted some uh, Raven sort of pictures. And uh, I went through them and I kind of, I went through that same thing where I began, I began to get anxious about uh, what kind of background do you do on Raven, you know, of all things. So uh, the more I thought about it, I thought, uh, never mind, nuts to it, I'm just gonna go with it, right? So this was, this was the first one first Raven painting that came up uh, and I, obviously I did the background first. Years ago I used to do the subject matter first and then paint the background around it I found out that makes no sense whatsoever. Okay so this one I knew I was going to do a Raven. I was already thinking Raven. So I knew that my background wanted to be some kind of muted colors but at the same time lately I've kind of discovered some uh, gold. You guys have seen it in our Tuesday tips. I kind of like gold in paintings. So I have some metallic paint in here too and I hope you can see that but uh, this is really just a little black, white, and gray. Uh, it's actually Payne's gray that I used in there. Not a whole lot of black, but really a lot of Payne's gray. Some gold down there, and I knew where my raven was gonna sit in the painting when I did it, but uh, that was uh, ahead of time, uh, what I wanted to do for that background. So that was one. This was the second one uh, when I was studying ravens. I found out that uh, ravens really aren't that far separated from doves, all right? But, uh, and we'll talk about that in a different video. But, for the sake of this video, I went back to backgrounds. You can see that this one is not terribly far removed from this one. Uh, for me, as you guys have heard me say before, contrast is what works for me in a painting. Uh, so a raven, obviously black, a more light or a white background almost, a dove that is normally white, a little bit darker background. Really the same set of colors though. Got some gold, some paint gray, some white in there, layered it on with a putty knife, or a, I should say a palette knife. That's our background for that. I painted that background long before I ever thought about doing what I was gonna put on. I knew it was gonna be a dub, didn't know where it was gonna go or what uh, pose it was gonna be in. So that was the next one. Uh, after I did that one, still working with the Raven theme and I, uh, I wanted to add a little color. I had black and white in the others, but I wanted to get a little splash of color in there. And uh, if you guys have seen Ravens, maybe out in the daylight or a crow for that matter, for that matter, any black bird. There's always a little bit of blue in there, so I thought I'd put a little blue in the background to kind of balance that out a little bit. So just another background there. We're actually gonna paint a background uh, in this video, but just to show you how that plays out here at Art and Soul in our classes, I got a couple of examples. This is a background that gets used frequently here. Could be this way, could be this way, okay? But uh, that background, pretty straightforward. Teal paint mixed in with a little white, some texture added with a, a wet paper towel. That background could be used on either this painting, which is one that we do in our classes. Okay, you can see why that background would work, or flip that round so it makes sense for you. There, that's better. So that background, you can see, work equally well with that. So think ahead of your background, plan ahead a little bit, think of your subject matter. We've got a couple more here. Uh, here's a background for a painting. That could be a few different things. And if you've seen videos in the past, you might know what goes on this painting, right? This is painting we do here in classes. Uh, that's the painting that goes on top of that background, okay? So plan ahead, do your background ahead of time. That works pretty good. We've also got a couple of more here. I'll make this brief. Uh, this painting gets done here at Art Soul quite a bit. This is our abstract butterfly, okay? Background doesn't seem terribly important, but you don't want that background to uh, detract or, or uh, confuse the painting itself. So that background, that's how we do it, right? So this back, I have this background, it's done, it's dry, it's ready to paint that abstract better. butterfly. Next time I do that painting. Last one then, uh, Tiny Dancer's painting that gets done. This is a, a background that gets done. A little bit of paint, a lot of water, kind of a wash for a background, but then that's our painting that ends up on there, okay? So these are all paintings that happen and backgrounds that happen right here in our classes to our classes that we do here every day. And uh, what I want to do now is we're going to take a break. I'm going to go right over to the uh, easel and we're going to paint a background similar to one of these on the rails just show you guys how that happens, all right? Don't go away.